Ready? Yeah. And oh god. Okay. And action. The Flash is not a robot. Ever since the hero called Superman first appeared on TV, the world has undergone a rapid change. Superheroes, something that used to only exist in comic books, are now appearing on the nightly news. Conspiracy theories are going insane. These people have become celebrities, but that was six years ago that we first saw Superman. And Superman wasn't the last one. There were rumors of a monster in Gotham that evolved into actually being pretty credible reports of a vigilante, heavily armed and dressed as a bat. What the fuck? But on top of that, the Superman has actually accrued a group of, let's call them unique people, that he identifies as the society. A group of strange outsiders who have linked together in this new media age. The age of superheroes. That's Lois Lane talking, not me. These people are vigilantes. I mean, they're extra legal operators. They should be in jail. But no one's really mad at the society. In fact, they're way too busy being excited because Lex Luthor, the richest man in the world, two years after the first appearance of Superman debuted something called the Justice League. A powerful super soldier, beautiful and strong, the Wonder Woman. An incredible machine, the Flash, which can run faster than the fastest sonic jet. And don't forget Manchester Black, the charming leader of the Justice League. A British no-good ruffian who's reformed and uses his psychic powers for good. No, that was all lies. For the last two years, Lex Luthor has used a team of a brainwashed primitive, an evil criminal, and a man named Barry Allen who designed the Flash suit as his private strike team. He's used this team to get good PR for himself all over the world. I mean, think about it. If Jeff Bezos owned a superhero team, it's fucking perfect. He looks like a genius. For every great thing the Justice League does, Superman and his society look a little bit shittier. However, when Lex Luthor tried to target the society to fulfill a vendetta against Superman, no bueno. Wonder Woman ended up ramming into the society at Queen Industries headquarters, took them all out, and then quit on her own. Wonder Woman's sick of Lex's shit. She's begun to believe maybe he's not really the son of Zeus. I don't know, just sort of a vibe. After Wonder Woman quit the team, Barry Allen, the Flash, realized things were going downhill fast. When a reporter named Clark Kent approached him and said that Superman knew who he was, the Flash panicked, went on TV, and sold out Lex Luthor. Something that everyone thought was a robot took off its helmet on live TV, was a guy, and then that guy said, I'm being blackmailed by the richest man in the world. The president called Lex Luthor personally to ask him to surrender, just for questioning. But Lex sent him straight to voicemail and then texted the attorney general, if you want me, come get me. I mean, if you want me, come get me. The world basically found out in one text that Elon Musk was actually Al Capone. Stock markets all over the world went into free fall as the FBI surrounded Lex's headquarters in Metropolis. Is this a good angle? Great angle. Okay. How am I doing? You should get me closer on this too. How am I doing? Doing great. Are you, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Um,
Manchester Black, a psychic with incredible telekinetic abilities, was standing in the front lawn of LexCorp. The society had to be there. Unbeknownst to the world, Luther has antagonized Superman for years. He's tried to kill him multiple times. Luther is totally insane, and no one knew that but Superman. This should be the defeat of his greatest enemy, the best day of Superman's life. Superman should be happy, but he isn't. You see, that's because Superman is actually a guy named Clark Kent. The last five years have been fucking crazy for him. He went from being in college for veterinary medicine to living in Metropolis trying to make it as a reporter to making it as a reporter to being attacked by a vigilante to becoming a vigilante to forming a team of vigilantes to saving the world from robots in Hawaii with a team of vigilantes. He killed the Suicide Squad. He encountered dark secrets from his alien past. He was trained then betrayed by Batman. It's been a crazy fucking ride for Clark Kent to be Superman. He thought he would get to defeat Lex Luthor. Instead, The Flash is getting Lex Luthor arrested. There's no big showdown. There's not the epic confrontation that he was expecting. Clark has grown to enjoy fighting, but it's never been his first thing. And yet, they're going to arrest Luthor peacefully? That just, ugh, something about that rubs Clark wrong. You see this guy out front, Manchester Black, this freak who Luther turned into a powerhouse? This guy's a prick and an asshole. He was in jail in Bristol, two DUIs. He has a fucking manslaughter charge from a bar fight. He's a piece of shit. Keep in mind, Luther's Justice League was primarily a PR enterprise. Though they killed most of the CIA's most wanted in extra legal strikes, these people were basically figureheads. That means when Connor, Oliver Queen's son, got to do a meet and greet with Manchester Black, Manchester personally told one of Clark's best friend's kids to go fuck himself. And when he started crying, Manchester said, and I quote, stop being a pussy. The kid is seven. Lois has impressed on Clark that his confrontation with Manchester Black is a chance to redefine what Superman is. Clark's refusal to accept interviews as Superman means the rare pieces of footage of him define the public narrative around him. And because Wayne Core algorithms delete most clear photos of Superman's face, the narrative is pretty fucking muddy. People are starting to say he is an alien. Lois tells Clark that this is his chance. Redefine himself as the dominant superhero. Embarrass Manchester Black and embarrass Luther. And you know what? Clark's ready. This guy fucking shat on his friend's son. And then on the way there to LexCorp, Clark gets a fucking call from John, his dad in Kansas. The last time Clark was on TV as Superman, it was cell phone footage of him running and screaming from Wonder Woman as she repeatedly beat the shit out of him. This footage has been shared all over the internet because in it, there's a gif people do where Superman goes like this after he gets hit. That's because Clark was panicking. He'd never fought anyone like Wonder Woman. But uh, when Wonder Woman is just shit rocking you in the face and you're screaming help, and you're supposed to be like the most powerful superhero in the world, you see why John Kent, you can see why John Kent has some fatherly concern about how this confrontation with the psychic might go. You're gonna take him out, right? The British fella? Dad, are you telling me you want me to uh, just embarrass this guy and wreck him on TV? just like straight up for you, for my dad. I mean, Clark, I remember one time a Rottweiler came for your mother. Yeah, I remember, you want me to Rottweiler this guy? Rottweiler's okay now, isn't he? I mean, he still has that limp. He earned that limp. And I think maybe this British fella earned a limp too. So Clark heads into this confrontation with Manchester Black, fired the fuck up. Dude is going. So when Clark lands in front of LexCorp, he's there to prove a point. 
Manchester is standing out in front of the lobby on the lawn in front of a fountain and Clark just walks straight up to him alone as the FBI and the National Guard, basically every single cop from fucking Metropolis to fucking Miami is arriving at the same time. Clark walks up to Manchester and just speaks quietly to him. Just gonna beat your ass. Normally, I would like try to talk to you or like try to calm you down, but I don't know if you remember this, but you were very rude to Oliver Queen's son when he asked for your autograph. And also, I was on the phone with my dad on the way here, and he said that I should beat your ass. And honestly, my girlfriend says so too. You're a murderer. I don't like you. I'm worried you're gonna hurt these cops. And honestly, it's just gonna be a fucking superhero fight, and you're fighting Superman, so you're just gonna lose. So, do you wanna like get down on your knees? and beg me not to beat your ass. And seeing the helicopter there, that's the Daily Planet. So they're watching this. So everyone will see me beat your ass, basically, because we're famous. I'm sorry, am I being weird? Are you fucking retarded? I'm gonna turn you into jam. Okay, do it. You lost your bloody mind, I'll kill you. You won't, I'm Superman. I, it's, go for it. <laughs> I'll get to kill Superman on television. Just try and see how it works out. All right. Imagine an invisible steel plate about 40 yards long and 50 yards high, wiping the world from around Clark Kent. The entire parking lot lifting up, the asphalt flying into the air as though someone were peeling the earth. Cars flipping and disassembling themselves. The FBI and the National Guard suffer dozens of severe injuries as they flee in terror. And yet Superman is just standing there. Was that it? Did you do it? Is it done? That was the big, you're like the bad super superhero and that was it? Okay, here we go. Flips the cape into Manchester Black's face. Manchester goes, Whoa! he then goes, Bleh! cuts off the front of his left foot. Boom, hits him in the throat. Manchester can't breathe, he's stumbling backwards. Superman goes like this to the cameras. Wah! Starts walking after Manchester and slowly floating into the air. Manchester turns around, tries to get another one of those beams going, not happening. Clark fucking slaps him in the face, grabs his head. I can crush your head right now. You wanna give up? I give up! <laughs> you can't actually give up. BAM! No one delivers a punch like Superman. Manchester Black is sent flipping 30 feet through the front windows of the lobby of LexCorp. Clark floats in like a G and then gets on the ground because he's out of view of the cameras and fucking throws up. He has a nosebleed, he's crying, his ears are ringing. You can't take a psychic blast to the face and be fine. Green Arrow, one of Clark's closest friends, the wonderfully charming billionaire Oliver Queen, who's also a bit of an arrogant piece of shit and is enjoying watching Superman barf about as much as you'd imagine he would, climbs down and goes, so you beat the psychic guy? I couldn't see the whole thing that happened, but I saw you fly down and be like, and then I saw him be like, and then I just saw like, oh, Clark, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh, thanks, man. All that means the world to me, dude, like, oh, God. Do I look okay? No, Clark, I'd say you look bad. Do you want to go get Lex? Yeah, I do. I do want to arrest Lex Luthor. Oh God, okay, let's go! Ted Cord, the Blue Beetle at this point, has finally arrived, but Zatanna, his daughter figure, a magical girl who Lex kept as a slave for a number of years in an attempt to learn magic, was not allowed to come. You see, Zatanna, she wants to kill Lex Luthor. And this is a media event not a crime-fighting emergency. What they're doing right now is literally for the cameras because every eye in the world is watching them. Having a crazy refugee murder Jeff Bezos on CNN, maybe not. Maybe he's a time to stay home. Ted is in a very bad mood about this and he can't wait to arrest Lex. But when they breach Lex's office, his bodyguard Mercy isn't there, no one's there. Lex is sitting alone. Jimmy Olsen, Lex Luthor's biographer for the last two years, has been locked out of the building by the FBI, but escapes FBI custody and starts sprinting through the destruction towards the building. He has to get Superman arresting Lex Luthor. That's what his whole life is about, right? It's gonna happen once in history. 
A guy who can fly just beat up a psychic guy and is now going to help arrest the richest man in the world? I mean, what happened to the normal news? Then again, I guess we're asking ourselves that lately in the real world. So if there is a commentary about As Clark walks in, he attempts to put on, you know, a veneer of Superman. He always keeps about 10 feet between him and Lex. Clark Kent's identity relies on him staying a little bit above and a little bit away from everyone. But not this time. Clark walks right up to Lex's desk and Lex smiles at him as the Blue Beetle puts the cuffs on. I hope you know this is only a delay. As the richest man in the world, a pauper or a prisoner, I will still beat you. You're mistaken if you think this is the end. Superman, allow me to tell you what you already know. Your story does not have a happy ending. Hey, wait, Lex, look at this. You sell these. Look, that doesn't even look like me. These abs, like I wish. Bam, there goes Manchester Black. Here, here, I want you to just, here, take this. He takes the Superman figure and he two Lex who's cuffed. I just thought that would be like a commentary. I don't know. I just thought it'd be funny to do that to you while you were cuffed. Now I kind of feel like it was bullying. Lex, I should tell you, this is embarrassing, but if I smell like barf, it's because I barfed. What? Why would you say that? What is, why is it always jokes with you? Why would you say that? Lex Luthor, Fucking loses it. Hashtag trigger, rage mode, seeing red, screaming in anger, furious as Jimmy Olsen comes through the fucking door with a fucking camera to get that footage. Clark realizes, oh, that's my friend from work, Jimmy Olsen. Yikes, and flies straight through the roof. He's just scared, but it makes for a pretty epic exit. As Jimmy Olsen live streams, Lex Luthor screams that he will kill Superman. That's not gonna look good in court. <laughs> Oliver Queen goes straight to the camera. Ted Cord gets some sort of emergency call from Gotham and leaves, but Clark Kent only has one goal. He is finally feeling it, that moment of triumph. He has to admit to himself, it feels like something is ending and there's only one person he wants to talk to. Lois, Lois, did you see? Clark, I saw it all, it was the best thing I've ever seen. You saw me like, Manchester, boom! And then I was like, Pfft! and then Lex was like, ah! And I was like, here's an action figure, dumb shit. And I told him I barfed, it was sick. Everyone here was screaming and they don't even know you. Clark, I'm the horniest I've ever been. Yeah, I knew you would be, I knew you would be. Are you in the closet right now? Now? Yeah, I am. I'm in the janitor closet on the third floor. I actually like took the elevator to go down to the closet when I saw your text. Oh my God, Clark, you did it. Okay, what we'll do is you come here and then we'll celebrate. Oh, Clark, stop. What, what do you mean? What do you mean me come there? You know, it's over. It's over. Clark, are you not thinking about what's happening? Do you think because you got Lex, my life stops? Well, no, I, I didn't mean... You know, I didn't mean your life should stop. I just, this is one of the most important moments in my life. There's no one else I want to spend it with, right? Clark, I'm the chief anchor of a major news network and you just participated in the violent arrest of the richest man in the world. Global markets are in free fall. All of Lex's companies are falling into themselves or being bought. Every single capitalist nation on earth is in a high state of domestic terror alert. There have already been three shootings at Lex Corp buildings. Conspiracies are going insane. Clark, people are saying Superman was in on it. Okay, well then I'll see you tonight, maybe? Clark, are you joking? The news day isn't even over. More could happen today. 
you're not gonna see me for at least 48 hours. I need you as a liaison. You need to take off the Superman costume. But I'm sorry, are you telling me to come into work right now? Clark, you know. No Daily Planet, the reporter is the story. If I don't have you, I just have Jimmy and Jimmy's following Lex. Lois, I don't, I, I just wanna have this moment with you. Clark, I love you. I understand that this is a big moment, but it's not something we can do together. All right, because I'm Superman. <laughs> Lois is right. The news day isn't over. A 7.4 earthquake has just ripped through Gotham City along the Alameda Fault, the largest fault line on the East Coast. Gotham is built on three interconnected islands. All of them are devastated. The entire society is exhausted. In the last week, they've had to deal with Wonder Woman, The Flash, and they just arrested Lex Luthor. They're now already on their way to Gotham to answer the largest natural disaster in American history? Initially, this is the bread and butter of the society. Disaster relief, that's what they've been doing for two years. They've fought a total of three supervillains in their entire time as a superhero team. Before they can even head to Gotham, something truly horrifying happens. In the midst of the chaos and tragedy, the Daily Planet's Gotham feed has been hijacked by the anarcho-terrorist performance artist Aaron Scott, the man known to the world as the Joker. What's interesting about creating fear is, down to the very basics of it, it's still creating something, so if I were to scare you, bah! you know, that created a feeling, did it not? Aaron Scott, armed with a crowbar, clarifies that the young man tied up in a seat next to him is none other than Jason Todd, a military veteran who the superhero Batman recruited as the second Robin. After the first one quit, we'll get into it. Keep in mind, this is already the biggest news day in human history. And now, a superhero is beaten to death on national television. They can't get the feedback. So when the Joker takes the crowbar, sticks it under Jason's torn rip, and rips his jaw off, there's nothing they can do to stop the broadcast. Superman. Batman, you look at these people, they're just guys in costumes, so how am I any different? <laughs> they're both clearly insane. As 458 news helicopters make the two hour trip from Metropolis where Lex Luthor was arrested to Gotham, which is burning and going crazy, Clark watches in horror on television. Gotham is fucking going nuts. The damage from the earthquake is only the beginning. You see, Batman had the whole city booby-trapped, and now all those booby-traps damaged by the earthquakes are going off on civilians and cops! You remember that scene in the first Ghostbusters when they opened the containment thing? I believe it's magic. That, but with Batman shit on innocent people. And that's when the breaking footage comes in. Another news interruption in a series of news interruptions. Wayne Manor is on fire. Bruce Wayne is visible in a helicopter shot, standing in a robe and half of a Batman suit, drinking a glass of scotch and holding a lit torch. So now what's the headline? Richest man in the world arrested, Gotham destroyed, or Bruce Wayne is Batman. None of that matters to Clark. You see, that conversation with Lois actually like really shook him up. And all he wants right now is another Superman job. The entire world sees a privileged billionaire revealed as a criminal vigilante. But for Clark Kent, he sees the man who inspired him to become Superman, committing suicide out of mental illness. So he decides, that's my guy. I'm going to save Bruce Wayne, who's with me? Clark, it's Ted, you know I'm already here. You want to arrest two billionaires in one day? I'll feel like J. Edgar Hoover. 
Hey, uh, Ted, it's Ollie. My ribs are broken, so I'm gonna sit this one out on the going to Batman's house and then going in Batman's house while it's on fire. Arthur, are you on? I'm already on my way to Gotham, Clark. I've been waiting to meet the princey little shit who sent you after me and have a word with him about how far his money will take him at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, Arthur, we're thinking capture, not kill here. Capture, not kill, like he wanted you to do to me. Oh, no, no, Arthur, don't get me wrong. If he fights back, we're gonna whip his ass. Kent, tell me how is it you always say the perfect thing. I'll be there in 10 minutes. That about me. Z, I, I, I know you'd want to be here for this, but I, I just... So I can't help you against Luther. I can't help you against Batman. Tell me how I can help, Clark. Is it only when cameras are rolling? That's not what I mean. People in Gotham need your help, all right? No, people in Gotham need Superman, Clark. You should be there. Or do superheroes only arrive to personally save billionaires? Z, you know that's not what Batman... Z? Clark, this is Eddie. There's supposed to be a criminal called Bane in Gotham. I wouldn't be surprised if he's behind this. Bane? It's Bane? Dick? Clark is approached by Richard Grayson, a man who from age eight to age 17 served as Batman's apprentice, the first Robin. Richard, or Dick if you're nasty, left Batman after Batgirl was paralyzed. You see, he was secretly dating her and Batgirl was actually Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's daughter, the head of the Gotham police. Aaron Scott, the same motherfucker who just fucking killed Jason Todd, paralyzed Barbara and tortured Jim, and it was enough for Dick to just leave Bruce once and for all. Dick knew Clark would go to Gotham, so he fucking went to Clark. Clark, there is no fucking Bane. Bane was an alias Bruce used to use. Bane B. Wayne Bane. He lived as Bane for two years in South America to get a good idea of the crime scene in Gotham. If Bane is active now, it's not Bane, it's Bruce. And he has finally lost it. You cannot go. I will not let you go, Clark. He will kill you. Batman is the most dangerous man alive. I know him better than anyone else and you know that. He does not care about you. Everything with him is just another game, Clark. It doesn't end. This man took me from the death of my parents into a cave where he gave me armor. He doesn't have compassion. He doesn't have a soul. He would not do this for you. Batman would let you die, Clark. Let him go. If I let Bruce Wayne die, you will regret it for the rest of your life. And I will too. I'm going to save Batman. You don't get it, Clark. There is no saving Batman. Well, then I'll go save Bruce Wayne. Clark, fresh off Luther, gets ready to go to Gotham, and then his phone rings. Hey Clark, it's Lois. I'm back in the closet. I just want to talk to you really quick. Ollie said that you were maybe going to Gotham to try to get Bruce. I know Dick Grayson was going to talk to you about this, but I don't want you to go, okay? I take it back. I'll go off TV right now, okay? I'll just, I'll just take the day off work. You should not go to Bruce Wayne's house, okay? That's not a safe place for you, and I think you know that, and I think right now you're being very ir irrational, and I just don't want you to go. I can't let Bruce Wayne die, Lois. I mean, I'm supposed to be Superman. Okay, Clark, good luck, I love you. I love you too. And I don't need luck, I'm the man of steel. The last rays of sunset illuminate the crumbling skyline of the once beautiful city of Gotham, now lit only by fire and emergency lights. As the Blue Beetles craft the bug flies over the Gotham City River into the neighboring county of Bristol, we see that Wayne Manor is not the only building on fire. The Blue Beetle swoops and swings low around the pillar of smoke rising from Wayne Manor. There is one news helicopter already there, and it's the Daily Planet. It's from this view to best describe what happens next. Streaming live internationally to 52 countries, the Daily Planet witnesses a massive flock of bats, most of which are on fire, launching out of the windows and doors of Wayne Manor as though the house was flooding with flying, flaming rodents, the entire building engulfed, and then the bats 
mixing with the smoke and dropping out of the cloud like debris, their corpses burning and lighting the beautiful grounds of Wayne Manor tended to by the butler Alfred for the last 50 years entirely on fire. The legacy of the Wayne family is burning for the whole world to see. Clark, I'm seeing a lot of stuff on the screens here. I'm seeing a lot of stuff I don't like. The Batwing, Batman's custom designed $40 billion jet explodes through the atrium of Wayne Manor, sending the entire east wing of the house tumbling down Crest Hill. Ted has to swerve the bug, nearly colliding with the Batwing as it flies 300 feet into the air and then self-destructs. The bug is moment momentarily engulfed in flame and then drives directly through the swarm of bats, covering it in burning bloody bat flesh. Clark, I gotta get out of here now! Arthur takes initiative and just jumps out of the bug, goes crashing through the roof of Wayne Manor. A second bat wing comes rocketing up from the garage, crashing five different luxury cars across it as it lifts into the air and begins to fire on the bug. Ted's not fucking afraid of this. He goes ramming into the bat wing and both of them go crashing offwards. Clark drops backwards out of the bug, flying straight down into the smoking hole in Wayne Manor. The Batcave, a 17-story deep complex, is now engulfed in fire and smoke. Visibility is low as Clark and Arthur move carefully down into its first secret chambers. Why so afraid, Superman? I don't think I've ever seen you look this nervous. Arthur, you don't understand. He is dangerous. <laughs> dangerous? He's just a man in a costume, not a god like us. We're ripping limb from limb. There's an explosion from down below them, and water begins to stream into the bat cave. The entire structure appears to be collapsing. This place is falling apart. I don't smell any humans up here. I'm going to go deeper. The Aquaman leaps down into the water that is flooding the bat cave. Wait, Arthur, is that clean water or salt water? Salt water? Why would it be salt water this far in? Arthur, get out of the water! It's a trap! Way too late, Clark. It's fucking Batman time! Let's go! The entire bat cave turns into a toilet. Arthur gets whirlpooled 17 stories as the cave drains and then flushed into a fucking tube that takes his giant super strong ass dead ass three miles out to the ocean. Oh, god damn it. Oh, fuck. Okay, Bruce! Clark floats out into the atrium of the Batcave, floating down past different vehicles, eccentric gadgetry, strange trinkets and trophies. All of these things are now on fire. Bruce Wayne, or whatever he is now, has been through here. Bruce, it's Clark Kent. Uh, I saw on TV that you were having problems, so I thought I would just come check if you were okay, but I guess that's dumb to say now looking at what's happening so if you would just come out I'm getting pretty freaked out here dude <sighs> breathing through a gas mask audible through the intercom in the bad cave as Clark floats down through a hall of Batman's villains Psychopaths and serial killers now vanquished to Arkham, their costumes and equipment still on display here like some sort of bizarre museum of horrors. <sighs> Clark sees a small natural cave entrance surrounded by dead bats and moves through a wall of smoke and fire to see a figure huddled in the corner. <sighs> Bruce? The thing in the corner is wearing some sort of face mask, a grid over its mouth. <sighs> Mr. Kent, you shouldn't have come. Bruce, why the fuck are you talking like that? Bane leaps out of the corner and plants both feet into Clark's chest. Disoriented by the smoke and confused in the darkness, Clark goes ass over tea kettle, falling further into the cave. <sighs> Batman is broken! Only Bane remains! 
Oh shit, you've gone fucking crazy, Bruce. This is weird as fuck. Bane leaps down onto Clark's shoulders and twists his neck. That would kill anyone else, but Bane just uses it for leverage. Clark tries to fly up and away, but not in the fucking cave. Duty hits the ceiling. The electrical wiring and gadgetry falling down on him in a shower of sparks and fire. You cannot survive in the darkness, Superman. Whereas I was shaped by it, molded by it. Something better and stronger than Batman. A glowing green blade has extended from Batman's wrist. This is the element known as kryptonite, a mysterious radioactive metal that can cut his flesh like butter. Oh, sh fuck. Somebody help? Somebody help. Batman's gonna kill me. Bane leaps down and Clark instinctively blocks. You have to keep in mind, Clark was trained by Batman. This isn't Batman versus Superman. This is fucking Neo versus Morpheus. Block, counter, throw. Super strength doesn't mean shit when your opponent is a master of momentum and you can't see. Clark at this point is swinging wild in the cave. Every hit causes structural damage and Clark finds himself in a spotlight. No, those are headlights. A Batmobile lands on Superman. And then another Batmobile, and then another Batmobile. One of the older Batmobiles has a transparent bubble instead of an armored cockpit. And when it hits Clark, he flips into it, breaks the bubble with his elbow, gets behind the wheel, and drives the car into Bane. The two of them go plummeting down to the lowest level of the cave, the Hall of Villains. Clark climbs out of the wreckage of the Batmobile, but Bane is nowhere to be seen. Down here, the air is in two levels. The black smoke choking the roof, and then under that, a thin layer of some kind of orange mist swirling and curling around Clark as he moves into the Hall of Villains. Clark's foot crunches on something, and he reaches down and picks it up. It's Plan B. Morning after birth control pill? There's a noise. And over there, lit thinly through the mist, is a scarecrow, just like the one that used to be in the fields when he was a child in Kansas. Clark feels dizzy. He moves towards the scarecrow when Bane attacks again! Clark is now totally disoriented and overwhelmed. He keeps dodging the kryptonite blade, but there's only so long he can go until he reaches out and grabs one of the penguin's umbrellas and fires a fucking missile at Bane. It explodes the entire side of the room, giving Clark time enough to pick up Garfield Lynn's The Firefly's flamethrower. Fuck you, it's Superman with flamethrower in his bitch! The flame spreads across the ceiling of the cave, giving Bane nowhere to hide. He drops down, swings the blade in, Clark catches it, fires his eye beams. They refract off the kryptonite, sending a wave of energy that way towards the scarecrow. Everything goes. I didn't see you there. My name is Dr. Jonathan Crane. I'm a psychopharmacologist here at Ace Chemicals, and if you're watching this, I'm already dead. dead. <laughs> My goal is to allow people to see their inner truth, to be finally free of the burdens of childhood trauma by eliminating the human childhood. You see, I'm what's called an antinatalist. That means I believe that the act of procreation is a crime. To bring a human into the world is to condemn them to an endless series of sufferings. Once you see what I see, you're going to wish you've never, never been born. born. Smallville? How did we get here? I thought we were in Gotham. To his complete surprise, Clark Kent, who moments ago was in a burning cave under a burning mansion, finds himself in a familiar cornfield in Kansas. 
Clark tries to fly, but just sort of does one of these. Then a small child with black hair and blue eyes emerges from the cornfield. Where, where are we? What happened? We are in a cave under my house because we are having a profound disassociative hallucination. If you weren't superhuman and I wasn't in the midst of a psychotic schizotypal break, we'd both be dead right now. I think we inhaled some of Dr. Crane's gas. How, how do you know? Hello, I'm Bruce Wayne. My friends call me the brain because I'm so smart. Bruce, why are you a little kid? I assume it's some simplistic representation of me having an underdeveloped emotional inner child. Wait, I didn't even think this gas would affect me. I thought it made you go insane and kill yourself. Oh, it does. Again, if you weren't a superhuman and I wasn't a genius, we'd both be dead. But instead, we appear to be... The young boy's eyes drift to the barn and he immediately looks away. I thought you like saw maggots and bats and snakes or something. Clark, don't be fooled. Something scary will happen soon. If I'm here, that means Batman's in here somewhere too. Bruce, you are Batman. I think you'll think very differently about that in a matter of minutes, Clark. Bruce, you'll forgive me, but you were just trying to kill me in your basement. I appreciate that you think you're looking out for me, but I'm home. I feel good. My skin is tingling. Mine is tingling? I keep seeing little weird vines everywhere, but that'll probably go away soon. I'm just gonna go see mom and dad, right? I'll just go talk to my parents. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that way. As Clark and the young Bruce Wayne walk down the road in Smallville, suddenly the road itself falls away and dozens and then thousands of trees rise up from the asphalt. Made of steel and iron, these trees, when examined closely, are actually the skyscrapers of Gotham, lit up windows and tiny figures moving within them. We are looking at a cityscape and Clark and Bruce walk through it like giants. The metaphors are all very simple. I'm a child, you're a normal human being. We're in a forest that looks like Gotham. That means we're still in the early stages of the gas, Clark. This isn't scary at all, I feel good. I mean, like, this is beautiful. We're intruders in Gotham, Clark. You know what that means, right? A single ray of moonlight comes through the trees, shining a bat symbol onto the ground. Clark, be careful, he's here. Bruce, calm down, we're alone. You keep saying you're not being affected by the gas, but you're afraid of Batman? Bruce, you are Batman. <laughs> Pulled up into the trees by a leather rope and gets a punch to the face. It's fucking Batman. Leaping through the trees, driving Clark into the side of buildings. It looks like King Kong versus Godzilla. If in King Kong versus Godzilla, it was just Godzilla shithousing King Kong into buildings. Clark is not able to fight back against what is essentially a psychedelic demonic version of the Dark Knight moving like water, trying to hit him just makes stuff splash off of him. You can't hurt him. Who are you? Clark is dropped from the tree and young Bruce Wayne begins to drag him away and Batman lands in front of them. Batman rises in front of young Bruce Wayne and leaps into a jump kick. Young Bruce Wayne dodges the kick, rolls backwards, he looks like Robin, bounces in a gymnast mood, parkours up and off a tree, gets Clark, pulls him into a hole in the tree and they fall through it onto a beach. Clark scrambles to his feet. His whole body hurts. He just got one-on-one -on -one by Batman. They appear to be at Amusement Mile, the bizarre theme park north of Gotham, which is mainly known for having really good drug dealers. Down on the beach, outside the park, they can see that a funeral is going on. A group of people are dragging a coffin into the ocean. As they drag it, young Bruce Wayne watches as Alfred's corpse flops out of it into the water. The pallbearers seem unperturbed by this and step onto the corpse, causing it to belch and vomit blood and gore as they crush it beneath their feet and finally drop the coffin onto it in the surf. Oh my God. 
Oh, God, that, that was terrible. It's not wheel. I'm more interested in the pallbearers, Clark. Did you notice them? The pallbearers actually are interesting. It's a young boy in a leather jacket who looks a lot like Clark, and then a girl in a red skirt. Who are they? You recognize them? No, they're not from, no, they're not from my, uh, no, not my real life. That's Superboy and Supergirl. I used to fantasize that there would be more Kryptonians, that I'd have a, a family of aliens who would support me. Fascinating. Clark, before we go any further, should I know anything about your desire for a family? Or why it would have a powerful presence in a fear hallucination? I guess maybe because, like, it's something I always wanted. Is that what this is? Again, I thought it was going to be, like, more violence and gore and, like... You thought the most powerful psychedelic on Earth was going to make you experience Halloween decorations? I, when you put it like that, they notice that all of the pallbearers have stopped and are now staring at them up the beach and begin to slowly walk towards them. Clark, I think you'll agree with me that it's best we leave. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The boy Bruce and the man Clark walk into Amusement Mile, a twisted carnival of the sort seen in the video game Carnival. Sorry. <laughs> Young Bruce and Clark Kent head into Amusement Mile and find it mostly unchanged. One would expect a distorted, surreal version of a carnival, but this feels fairly normal until they see that the carnival barker is James Gordon. Come on, come all! Bruce, the youngest of the Wayne clan, the pride of Gotham. We shut down the whole park just for you. We'll shut down the whole city just for you, Bruce. There are people who want to meet you in here. People who met me first. Hundreds of dead cops, 10 years of my life torn away from me, my daughter paralyzed, and all in the name of what? Law and order? Why, Bruce? Why? <laughs> Gordon, hey, it, it's, it's not real. Bruce, you, you know it's not real. It's just a hallucination. Look, he's, oh, it does look real. As they head further into the carnival, they notice a clown on the stage in a wheelchair. It's Barbara Gordon, the woman the Joker paralyzed, and she stands shakily on emaciated, broken legs as she walks until the bones stick out of her knees, the legs snapping until her pelvis splits apart, revealing the face of the Joker, Aaron Scott, as she gives birth to him, him clawing his way out until she's nothing but a pile of gore and bones. What's the matter, Batman? No room for me in your hallucination? I'm not Batman, Aaron. I'm Bruce. And of course you're not here. You don't mean anything. I don't mean anything? I have 25 million Instagram followers. I own the Batman narrative. I am thought of as his primary foe. And you're going to tell me I can't even scare a little fucking kid? Aaron. Joker, this is what you don't understand about me, I guess because you didn't know who I really am, but to become Batman, I traveled the world for 10 years. I went to active war zones. I went to lawless areas. I saw holes 20 feet deep filled with the corpses of children. I saw serial killers in the Sudan where there's no law enforcement racking up triple digit body counts. I saw people killed because someone got confused. I saw people tortured by the United States government for crimes they did not commit. What are you, set off bombs in a city while wearing clown makeup? Aaron, in the scale of my life, the Joker is not terrifying. You are just obnoxious. Young Bruce takes out a pen, pokes the Joker in the chest and woo, like a balloon up into the sky. Whoa! It was that easy to beat the Joker? Clark, I keep trying to tell you, the Joker isn't the real problem here. <laughs> That's easy! Oh, I get it now, it's like an emotional catharsis. Like, each different thing you encounter and then you 
beat it and then you get it out. As the Joker's deflated corpse disappears into the sky, they can hear the sounds of a crowd nearby. Flesh slapping on flesh, the sounds of violence. The young Bruce immediately starts heading towards the disturbance, not away from it, as Clark hesitantly follows. They come to a crowd. Close examination will show each member of this crowd to be a victim of one of Batman's enemies. Torn out throats, torn out eyes, ripped off limbs, essentially a crowd of the undead, but recently dead, still bleeding and still rotting as they cheer wildly. In the ring, a massive man in a Lucador mask snaps a man in half over his knee and then gores him the way you split a turkey, just rip, causing a cascade of blood and entrails to fly onto the crowd. Oh my God, Bruce, what is that thing? Bang. Hey, yeah, boomy, you fat pieces of shit in Gotham. Hey, get in the crowd. Get in the crowd. Yeah, give me a microphone. Hey, you little piece of shit, Bruce Wayne. I am the original Batman. Before you ever put on that stupid cape, you lived as me. Blame! I was born into prison and raised amongst criminals. I fought a shark to escape and take drugs to make me stronger than any living man. And wasn't it more fun to be free? Weren't you a better criminal than you would ever be a hero? You remember my story? Don't you, Bruce? Don't you like my story better than yours? Give me the Except your truth live as bad. Clark isn't about to let this little kid fight this seven foot tall muscle man, so he gives him one of these. Don't worry, Bruce, I've got this. It's not real, right? Mind over matter. Clark steps up to get into the ring, but as he puts his hands on the ring ropes, they change into some sort of organic wood, a vine-like serpent. Ah, why does stuff keep doing that? Something inside you you're not letting out. Clark jumps down, afraid of the ring rope as the young Bruce Wayne climbs up and into the ring with the towering Bane. All right, let's get this over with. Bane charges Bruce Wayne, picks up the child and choke slams him into the ground. Then Bane picks up his head, fucking puts his foot on it and drives it down, curb stomps a child. Blood shoots out of Bruce Wayne's nose and mouth as Bane stomps his head and then lifts him into a pile driver, snapping his neck then picks up the corpse of the child, limp, motionless, arms dangling, I will break you, and snaps him over his knee. <laughs> Young Bruce Wayne, broken over the knee of Bane, practically split in two, stares up at him. You are defeated. Surrender your sanity. Bane, you can beat me all you want, but there's something you're forgetting. You aren't real. And he reaches up, snatches the mask off Bane, revealing a terrified young Bruce Wayne. You can't beat me. I'll turn into something bigger, you'll see. I'll be more dangerous than you could ever imagine. As Bruce rises to his feet, he grows into the teenage version of himself. Again, the metaphors are very clumsy. Kent, where are you? Hey man, I'm down here. The ring went all scary and the zombies are freaky and I just want to go. As the child Bane flees into the crowd, Bruce pulls Clark up onto the ring and then the world around the ring drops away and the ring itself closes and compresses. And suddenly Clark and Bruce find themselves holding on for dear life on the back of an 18 wheeler, the back of it open, the Batmobile already closing in on them. Both of them discover themselves to be holding automatic weapons. Wheeler careens through Gotham, smashing cars in all different directions. The Batmobile is plowing through civilians, going straight through storefronts, doing anything to catch the criminal. All right, Clark, it's still predictable at this point. That's Batman, let's kill him. Clark notices that there's something over his face and reaches up to touch it. <laughs> Can't focus, they're just delusions. That was Deadshot! Bruce, I killed Deadshot! I was Deadshot! I was Deadshot and I killed Deadshot! Focus, Kent. Focus. Help me kill Batman. 
Uh. No sooner has Clark tried to aim at the Batmobile than someone drops through the roof of the 18-wheeler. Bruce Wayne stops and stares. It's Dick Grayson, but now he wears full body armor, striped with blue, and a small domino mask holding two steel rods. Dick? Clark, that's not Dick. That's Nightwing. Dick Grayson leaps towards them, wall runs above Clark, and kicks him out of the back of the truck. Clark goes crashing through the front window of a plant store, landing in a field of flowers, which suck him down into them as Bruce is tackled off the back of the car to the pavement by Dick Grayson, who knees him in the jaw, elbows him in the side of the head, and then traps him in an arm bar on the ground. Ah! This isn't real! Ah! Clark rips himself free of the flowers, but finds that some of the vines have actually gone under his skin, and he pulls himself free to see Batman, or at least a Batman, striding towards Nightwing and Bruce Wayne. This Batman wears no armor, simply a gray spandex suit and a blue mask. He smiles and speaks warmly. Hello, chums! Out for a night of no goodery. Well, I guess you've seen how that turned out for you. <laughs> Nightwing break his arm. Nightwing snaps Bruce Wayne's arm and then drives him down with one knee, choking him and rubbing his face into the concrete. Anything for you, Dad. I'm proud of you, Dick. I mean, Nightwing. Isn't this what you wanted, Bruce? Isn't this what Batman was always supposed to be? A friend to those in need. A protector of the innocent. A force for good in a dark, dark world. Wasn't that the idea, Bruce? Isn't it about time you let the Cape Crusader have a chance at the wheel? There's still time. We can still be perfect if you just let me take control. Hey, Batman! Well, if it isn't intrepid reporter Clark Kent, I must say- <laughs> Clark tries to go one-on-one -on -one with the Cape Crusader. Bad idea. <laughs> Da -na 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 -na. Oh, Jesus! Stop! Enough! It's not him you want. It's me. Ah! This never happened. Dick left us, and he left us because ah, you lied to him. The Batman doesn't lie, Bruce. I stand for all that's noble and good in the world. Barbara Gordon. You gave him Barbara Gordon, you analyzed their psych files, you found they'd be a good match, and you fed them to each other to make them more loyal to you. They were teenagers, easy to manipulate, and you needed, ah, more soldiers! But Dick was never going to be Nightwing! He didn't even want to be Robin! Why can't you accept that? Ah! Why can't I accept that? Because there's still time. Barbara was brought back into the fold. Dick can be too. If you just give me control. You're not real! Ah! Bruce knocks Nightwing back and with one broken arm tries to throw a punch at his own son and he can't do it. That's what I thought, friend. Weak on the inside still. A little boy with blood on his face in an alley. Who gave you the right to be Batman? You think it's so easy to leave your past behind, and yet all you do is relive the same tragedy. Well, perhaps you should live there forever. Everything around the two men melts into fog. Nightwing and the Cape Crusader vanish, leaving only Bruce and Clark in a dense orange mist swirling around them. Wait, you knew about Batgirl and Robin? Dick thought that was his only secret from you, Bruce. I was Batman. There were no secrets. He was your son. You brainwashed your own son. 
He's not my son. He was my partner. Yeah, but Dick didn't ask for that. He was just a little kid. When Dick talks to me about you, he talks about you like you're a monster, and I always defend you. I came down here because I care about you. You came down here because you care about Batman. Don't deny it to yourself, Clark. You don't give a shit about me. No one does. Do you care about anybody but yourself? I care about everyone. I'm the only one who does what's necessary to protect people, who has the mind, the might, and the money to protect the world. I didn't ask for this, all right? This was done to me. You tricked someone into becoming a superhero and then tricked them into dating another superhero and then they got paralyzed, Bruce. How is that something that was done to you? Because everyone leaves! Everyone leaves. Every mentor I had that trained me stabbed me in the back. Every ally I have reached out to has abandoned me. Richard left. Alfred left. You left. Bruce, you tried to lock me up. You tried to kill me. What was I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do against you? I thought I would be fighting criminals and terrorists, and then suddenly a man is flying around in the sky over Metropolis? You treat me like such a maniac for being afraid of you, Clark. You treat me like such an obsessive fool for trying to protect the world from you. Do you know the things I've seen? Do you know the places I've been? After all this, after all your travels, you're still so naive. You're still just a small town boy who can't get out of his own head. You can't just be nice all the time. You have to control people. It's the only way to protect them. You have to control. I will be in control. They did not die. They will not die again. They will not die again. Clark sees that Thomas and Martha Wayne now lay on either side of the collapsed Bruce as he falls into silence. And then the dead parents of Bruce Wayne rise on either side of him. A skinny young man, his hands shaking, clearly coming off methamphetamine, walks towards them, raising a pistol. Give me the money. Calm down, son. We're just walking home. I said, give me the money. Clark watches in horror as the bodies fall, the blood and brain of his mother in Bruce Wayne's hair, and then the bodies rise again and again, a young man strung out on meth, the three of them walking home. Give me the money! Calm down, son. We're just walking home. I said, give me the money! And again, give me the money! Calm down, son. We're just walking home. I said, give me the money! <laughs> and again, give me the money! We're just walking. <laughs> the world around them crushes in, the fog becoming suffocating as the murder of the Waynes plays out again and again and again. Clark helpless to stop it until finally. <laughs> Batman appears from nowhere, disarming the young thug but too late to save the Waynes. It's time to surrender, Bruce. I'm the only one who can protect you. Protect me from what? Not quite the Dark Knight detective, are we, Mr. Wayne? Your public image is destroyed. After you leave this cave, if you survive, you will be a criminal. Long after this delusion ends, you will be thought of as insane forever, hated all over the world. It's time for you to acknowledge what happened in that alley all those years ago. Bruce Wayne died. He's been dead for 30 years. It's time to give me control. <laughs> give you control. Because you can protect me. You burned my house down. You ruined my life! Don't be a fool. 
I'm the last friend you have. Clark's here. Oh, is Clark Kent your friend? Batman and Superman, the world's finest. Isn't there something your friend should know before he continues to risk his life for a man who would kill him without a second thought? <laughs> don't, don't. First, what's he talking about? He won't be able to tell you, Clark. Your heart was in the right place. But sadly, that means nothing. The Batman jumps forward to attack Bruce Wayne! Batman attacks Bruce Wayne with such force that he drives him through the mist and back out into the cornfield in Smallville, the Kent barn in the near distance. Don't make me fight you. This is a delusion. Batman is over. Batman is over? No, Batman is only beginning. Batman will be returning. The Dark Knight rising. Batman forever and beyond. Batman and Robin, I will not be defeated by you. You will die. Stop. Stop. The Batman freezes in place. Bruce? Why are we at the barn? Clark, I, I stole the pod. The pod you came down in after I saw you in Metropolis. I had to know. When you were 23, I went to your parents' farm and took the pod you came down in and replaced it with a replica. That's why it never activated when you finally tried to go down there. I waited for you to go down there for years. Installed cameras throughout your parents' house. That's how you got the kryptonite? You took it from the pod I came down in? You stole it from my parents' house? Where's the pod now? I took it apart. I took it apart. We tried to reassemble it, but... I used the pieces to build the new armor. The new Batmobiles. Clark, I didn't know. I thought maybe it was a secret you were keeping, that you were some kind of invasion force. I didn't know you. I didn't know you. <laughs> you took my only connection to my past, and you took it apart to build a Halloween costume? Please don't be angry. Please don't leave. You're my only friend. No. Dick was right about you. You are a monster. No one left now, Bruce. Just you and me. And soon, only me. Batman attacks Bruce Wayne and Bruce is unable to defend himself. Batman is blinding him using pepper spray, breaking his arm, breaking his leg, and of course it's scarecrow gas, so it immediately heals, only to be broken again. Batman breaks Bruce Wayne's neck three times in a row, and then drives his face into the dirt, snaps his leg, and then breaks his back, pulling his arm around so it's like a fucking loose noodle because it's broken there, there, and there, and choking him with his own arm. You know, Wayne, I'll keep our promise never to kill. But I don't think this counts as killing you. Simply dispelling an illusion. Bruce Wayne begins to come apart into fear gas and screams, his mother's pearls falling, his mother's head exploding, his father's body falling. This is the end. Batman is taking over. Bruce Wayne is disappearing forever. Stop! Bruce, I didn't come here for Batman. I came here for you. Oh, you're such a bad person. You're so violent. Batman's such a criminal. That's all you. You can make what you are trying to do evil by looking at the negative consequences, but you can make any action evil by looking only at the negative consequences, Bruce. Why didn't you just drive up to my apartment and say, I'm Batman? I would have said, I'm Superman. 
We could have started on that foot. Instead, you steal my pod from my parents' house. You put me in a position to forgive you for that now. And I do. I hate it, Bruce, but I do. I believe you when you say you did it to protect me. And I hate that I believe it, but I do. Because that's who you are. This thing can ground your face into the ground and talk about how you're nothing, but Batman has disabled multiple nuclear bombs. You have saved hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives. You inspired me. Don't you get it? You started all this. Superheroes? Without you, it would just be Luther and the monsters. I would have been too afraid. I, I know that you're damaged. And I know that you've done horrible things. But Christ, Bruce, I believe in you. You changed my life, man. I love you. I'm not going to let you die in a cave because some fucking ghoul says so. Now get the fuck off my friend before I fucking kick your ass. This has been coming for a long time, Batman. Batman versus Superman. Everyone knows how this one... Bruce Wayne, Batman in a headlock, drives him this way, yanks backward, and rips off Batman's arm. Bats stream out into the night sky as though he was inflated and filled with them. Hundreds of thousands of bats exploding from the socket of the arm before Batman forces a second arm to billow out, grabs Bruce Wayne, Bruce knocks his hand away. You've seen the Matrix. One arm. Boom, 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 boom. Batman whips out a batarang, throws it at Bruce. He catches it, throws it back. Easy peasy. Embeds in Batman's eye, and then he rips upwards. <laughs> you idiot. Without me, there will be no one left to protect the world. What about justice? What about vengeance? Justice isn't supposed to be. Revenge. Batman starts unloading, throwing punches, but now every time he hits Bruce, it's just missed. He can't touch him until Bruce takes one finger and pins Batman against the wall of the barn. See uh, American Alien issue four, uh, Agent of Batman. This is over, Bruce. If I'm gone, we'll protect the world. I'll do it myself, with my friends. I'm scared. You don't need to be. You don't exist. <laughs> Clark, I... Clark? No. Okay, here we go. Uh, here we go, here we go, I'm gonna get it. Bruce Wayne snaps awake at the lowest levels of the Batcave, overcoming the fear toxin trance. He sees Clark Kent laying on the ground next to him, choking, still in the trance, foaming at the mouth. He draws out his grappling hook and in classic Batman style, takes Clark under one arm and fires it up, ascending rapidly through the Batcave towards Wayne Manor, towards freedom. As they begin to hear a Thumping Club remix. Hey, this is good. Something is clearly wrong. The house isn't even on fire. In fact, you can hear people laughing, people talking. Clark Kent slides out of Bruce's arms. He seems to be feeling much better. Whoa, that was crazy. Like, I got very emotional. I don't know if you got emotional, but I want to be honest with you, Bruce. I've loved the fear gas experience with you. It's been easy as fun, and it sounds like we're both about to get laid. Deuces! Something's wrong, Clark. 
This isn't my delusion. I'm not afraid of any of this. Yeah, but like maybe the scary part is over. You had your big thing and you- Look, the vines and roots we've been seeing everywhere, you don't recognize them, do you? Don't, don't talk about that. <laughs> Don't talk about that. I'm gonna go into the ballroom. The grand ballroom of Wayne Manor is fucking jumping. It looks like they're having a rave at the castle from Beauty and the Beast. Hot young women and sexy young men and also a lot of thems all rolling around in a pile, getting real Matrix reloaded on each other. Clark wades into the crowd of people. Are these your friends, my friends? Hey, easy, I have a girlfriend. I was just kidding around with him about getting Laid. Huh? Clark realizes that the ballroom is lined with identical copies of his mother, all pregnant, all nude, all about to deliver, grasping their bellies and screaming as the people on the dance floor begin to rip into each other, sexual cannibal, pulling away human skin in tides of blood to reveal hard shells and strange, veiny, alien flesh underneath as the writhing orgy of humans strips apart into a tangle of gory roots. Clark finds himself slowly lifting off the ground. Bruce! Bruce, help me! I can't control it! Help! Bruce Wayne takes a running start and grabs Clark's leg as he drifts higher towards the skylight and then crashes through it out into a purple alien sky. As Clark rises, briefly framed against an alien moon with Bruce Wayne dangling from his leg as he begs him not to let go, both of them suddenly tumble to the surface of the alien world. The vista of Krypton spreads as far as the eye can see. Buildings not built, but grown. Organic structures housing creatures that look like a mix of a rose and a crustacean crawling rapidly on tentacled legs. Bruce Wayne rises, staring out into the alien world. How is this possible? Is this Krypton? Your imagination of it, or how could you know what it looked like? The Arctic, Bruce. Didn't you wonder what we saw up there? It was one of them, one of me, the Kryptonians. A general from a planet with no war, and he told me, all the others were dead, all but him, and he wanted my blood, Bruce. He wanted to make more of me. You met a living Kryptonian? But this, this can't be your fear, Clark. You're not afraid of your past. It's what you wanted. It's what you want, you want. <laughs> She took a plan B, Bruce. Lois did when we were first dating. I found it in the garbage in her apartment. And I didn't care, I didn't want a, a kid. I, I just wish she'd talk to me about it. But then I started thinking about like, what if I did get her pregnant? And then I started thinking about this image of a baby's arm punching out of her stomach, <laughs> ripping its way free of her. And then once we met that thing, in the Arctic Zod. All I could see was those tentacles, those roots growing out of Lois and tearing her apart. And I still didn't want a kid, but then I started thinking, maybe I can't have a kid, right? Like, maybe it's just not part of my life. Maybe it's not something I should look forward to. And I think about my mom, you know, my mom was pregnant and she got hit by a drunk driver, Bruce. And she lost the baby. She saw the baby. It was so close that she saw the dead baby. My mother saw the dead baby taken out of her. And I arrived one month later. And they said I was a wish that was granted. They loved me, but they loved having a family. That was what we gave each other, a home. And then instead of giving them a family, I gave them what, this? Me beating people up on TV? People trying to kill me? 
When does this end? I wanted to help people, and I thought the way to do that was by giving a little of myself away. But now, I give so much of myself away that I can't tell when I'm Clark and when I'm Superman. It's eating my life! And now, I look on social media and all I see are my friends from back home getting married, getting pregnant, and I can't even get my fucking girlfriend to see me after the most important moment of my life. Why? Because I gave up on Clark Kent. And I didn't see it, but it's been in the back of my mind. Bruce, it's been in the back of my mind. I gave up on the person my parents wanted me to be, and I became some other thing because I thought it was the right thing to do. But now I've lost everything, and this will never end. Bruce, you're used to this. You wanted this. I thought I did, but now every time I put on the stupid costume somewhere in my brain, I know I'm killing Clark Kent a little bit more, and I will never have the life I want, and it will never end! Roots sprout out of Clark's ribs, cracking them open, and his human organs fall to the ground as he encrusts his human face, splitting apart John Carpenter the Thing style, revealing an alien face underneath that screeches and lurches his tentacles thrashing wildly. Bruce Wayne staggers back as Clark Kent transforms into an alien monstrosity, only for someone to land between them. Stand back, Mr. Wayne, an alien monster? This looks like a job for Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. We deserve to be a god. You hiding from it behind those glasses just embarrasses us both. Abandon Clark Kent. He has served his purpose. Become the man of steel. You are a god walking amongst them. Somewhere inside you, you know that. But as a noble god, we will choose to guide them. Guide all of humanity. That is the responsibility you asked for when you stepped out into the light. Accept what you are. The son of a dying world handed a new planet to conquer. Lex Luthor was right, Clark. You know the truth. Your story doesn't have a happy ending. Your life ends in violence. The world around them is swallowed by vines, the monster vanishing into nothing, the man of steel and his suit being eaten by the vines as Bruce Wayne reaches and then a hand grasps his. Bruce Wayne gasps in air choking on smoke and realizes he's lying on the front lawn of Wayne Manor. He's awake now, this time for real, the sky flooded with embers and dying bats as police helicopters circle the wreckage of Wayne Manor, it tumbling inwards and collapsing into the bat cave. Against the fire and flames, Bruce Wayne sees a figure silhouetted, covered in ash and burns. It's Dick Grayson. He came back for them. He dragged them both out himself. Bruce Wayne reaches to touch Dick Grayson's arm. And Grayson shoves him away, sending the disoriented and disgraced billionaire crashing to the ground. I didn't come here for you. As Dick turns, he helps Clark to his feet, still sputtering and choking. Dick puts a rebreather over Clark's mouth and gives him the antitoxin. He wasn't able to come out of it on his own. He went deeper into his fear. As the Blue Beetle ship, the bug, swoops low to pick up the disoriented Superman, Bruce Wayne pushes himself to his feet, shaking, feeling the heat from the burning ashes of his family's legacy. Clark! Clark Kent, still dazed, turns back to Bruce Wayne. I'm sorry, I love you, I'll try. Dick Grayson's face looks like this.
Two hours later, Clark is coming out of the fear gas trance. He's thrown up a couple of times. He's been crying a lot. They need him in Gotham, but he's not ready. The bug is parked on the mountains outside Gotham, from which you can see all of the destruction, thousands of emergency lights moving in the city. Clark Kent sits alone, staring at the fires. And then a familiar voice speaks in his earpiece. Clark, have you ever heard the story of the Chinese farmer? Bruce? Ted Cord comes running out of the bug, yelling, Guys, we gotta be ready! Bruce Wayne just escaped custody! Clark doesn't move. Hand on his ear. There was a farmer in a small village in China. And one day his horse broke loose and fell. It was injured. He had to put it down. And everyone in the village came and they said, Oh, what a terrible thing that you lost your only horse. And the farmer said, we'll see. The next day, the same broken gate that had led his first horse to escape allowed four wild horses to wander into his stable, and he and his son captured them together. And everyone in the village came around and they all said, wow, how lucky you are that this happened. You have all these new horses. And the farmer said, we'll see. And then the next day, his son was trying to train one of the horses and fell from it, and broke his leg, and everyone in the village came around and they said, what a terrible thing to happen, that your son has broken his leg. And the farmer said, we'll see. And then the next day, the conscription officer came from the army and took all the young men from the town to go to war. All but one. All the parents of the town came round and said, you're so lucky. And the farmer said, We'll see. Clark, you don't know what's coming next. But you have to believe. Remember why you're doing this. It's because you want to. Clark takes out his earpiece, puts on a clean Superman suit, and is in Gotham saving lives for the next 54 hours straight working alongside the entire society in the Gotham Fire Department, along with the U.S. military. Superman leads one of the largest humanitarian efforts, if not the largest humanitarian effort in human history. Exhausted after nearly four days awake, Clark changes out of his Superman uniform and goes to Gotham's crumbling city hall, where he meets a Daily Planet news crew. And among them is Lois Lane. He came. You actually came to Gotham. Of course, Clark, I told you I'd be here in 48 hours. It's been more than 48 hours. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> Lois, I'm sorry I hung up on you. It, it was immature and I know you were just doing your job and you have to take care of the whole world. Clark, I didn't handle that right either. I take care of the whole world, but you are the most important person in my world. And every time we fight, even the littlest fight, I just can't wait to be back good with you. I love you, Clark. I love you too. Hey guys, we're 10 seconds to air. Okay. Lois, how do I look? Babe, your glasses are broken. This is Lois Lane reporting live on the scene from outside Gotham City Hall, where Commissioner Akins is expected to make a statement on the escape of Bruce Wayne, the billionaire vigilante who has been revealed as the Batman. Clark? That's right, Lois. Lois sees Clark, no glasses, live television. And she looks at him and goes, and Clark goes like this. We are currently awaiting a statement from Commissioner Akins. Commissioner Akins, of course, took over for James Gordon after All he around the world, the people world. who have encountered now, Superman in person now, now see him on a broadcast as a reporter called Clark Kent. And they rise from their couches, chills covering their bodies as they realize a truth, an undeniable truth. Alone and on house arrest in a penthouse apartment, Lex Luthor stares at the television and begins to shake. Here, get close on my face, Ben. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful 
than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. And if there's any common phrase used as to why youngsters are taking drugs or doing the more bizarre or way out things, it is that they are bored. It's plan B. Morning after birth control pill? Like the kind you buy at Walgreens? Can you buy them at Walgreens? Great. Don't let drugs ruin your future. Dick gives him the... Grayson administers... Calling him Dick's always weird because Dick is penis, but that is his name. And I've known people named Dick. So I just try to say it casually, but every time I say Dick gives him, I'm like, uh. One time I looked in the mirror and I saw just my face just went through all these changes of uh, different uh, emotions and ages and, uh, you know, I could feel all of the things that I saw. From the very beginnings of unrecorded time, men have reached for substances in the world around them that would alter, extend, and materially change their perception of reality. You know, killing doesn't have to be destructive in its nature. Why, I could kill you right now and I could make it hilarious. Ah!